Today's the day. This is the start of a brand new economy class smackdown series between the current Middle Eastern super connectors, Turkish Airlines, Emirates, and today's carrier, Qatar Airways. Named the world's best airline several times in the past decade, Qatar Airways is a strong contender, but we all know that their business class is truly where they shine. So let's find out exactly how good the experience is for the 90% of Qatar Airways passengers who fly in the back. Over to you, Dan. Thanks so much, sports presenter Dan. It's me, regular Dan, reporting live from Skip Hole Airport, where the crowd is going nuts. I'm eagerly waiting to board today's flight, taking us from Amsterdam to Doha. The aircraft is a Boeing 777-300ER, and our flight time will be approximately six hours. From Doha, I'll continue on to Dubai on board the Qatar Airways Airbus A350, Dan. I'll include that flight as well to review the seat and service, but this smackdown is primarily focused on the 777. Great to hear, Dan. I hear he's now sent us his review. Someone in the back, roll those clips. We'll be standing by and we'll talk to you all shortly. Thanks for tuning in to today's start of the epic Middle Eastern Smackdown. This is one game you don't want to miss. Let's start today's video by taking a look at the seating layout. Their Boeing 777-300ER comes in two configurations, one with 48 business class seats and the one I was on with 24 business class seats. If you're curious about their Q-Suite business class experience, you can click the card to watch my most recent Qatar Airways business class reviews. If you're keen on joining me for a flight in Qatar Airways Q-Suite next year, I'll be bringing three subscribers with me on a Q-Suite flight as long as I reach 500,000 subscribers before the end of 2021. So you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. On today's flight, I chose seat 37K. Why? There's nothing specific that makes this seat special, but I like the wing view from the rows around here on the 777, which is why I chose to sit here. I'd much rather get off the plane later and have a good wing view than sit in the middle of the wing and get off earlier. Av geeks watching this will understand. As you can see, there are a few rows with three seats in the center and two seats by the windows. These would be my preferred places to sit. There are usually a few seats that basically have unlimited legroom. The problem is that Qatar Airways charges extra for them, and I think which seat in the row behind these rows of three actually has extra legroom changes depending on the aircraft configuration. So check Check the seat map when booking and you should be able to see which ones offer it. With that, let's go back to this morning. My day started out in a land far, far away. Slovenia, to be exact. Most people in Scandinavia don't have Slovenia on their radars for whatever reason, but boy, I loved it. After a few stunning days exploring the country, I flew out on Transavia. It was my first time flying this leisure carrier, which is owned by Air France KLM, and I can't say I enjoyed it. They charge KLM prices, but deliver a Ryanair experience with a touch of Shrek-colored seats. Soon enough, I made it to Amsterdam, an airport I'm increasingly coming to appreciate in terms of European hubs. Given its size, I'd say it's preferable to almost all the continental European alternatives. That's part of the reason I chose to fly Qatar Airways from Amsterdam specifically, but they also had an excellent price of $350 one way to Dubai in economy class. So I'm just about to hop on board, but first, today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I've had several deaths in my family the past year, so I know the importance of talking about and trying to understand things that are making us unhappy. Well, BetterHelp has a network of 20,000 therapists who you can start talking to within 48 hours of joining. And better yet, BetterHelp will assess your specific needs and match you to your perfect licensed therapist. You can also get help from anywhere so you don't need to worry about having good licensed therapists where you live. It's not a crisis line, it's not a self-help line, it's professional therapy done securely online. Of course, you'll get thoughtful and timely responses from your assigned therapist, but if you're not happy with them, you can easily change to another therapist for free. With BetterHelp, you can have weekly online video calls or phone calls, which is so convenient. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today, so it's cheaper than traditional offline therapy, 
and they even have financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash nonstop Dan and using coupon code nonstop Dan. That's better H E L P dot com slash nonstop Dan. Upon boarding, I was greeted by a flight attendant who directed me to my seat. And there I was, turning left, entering my queue suite. In my dreams. Today, I took a sharp turn right and did the walk of shame that's unavoidable in economy class when you're one of the last people to board. There was one benefit and one drawback of this specific flight, and the benefit was that it was quite empty, meaning I had an entire row to myself, which in turn makes it a thousand times less awkward for me to record. The drawback was that I didn't get to review the quality of the experience when the crew is pushed to the max, but to be fair, I've done my best to get as fair a comparison as possible, and the load factor is just one area I can't control. Anyway, arriving at my seat, there was a plasticky pillow and wrapped blanket waiting for me. The pillow material was an interesting choice, but I came to appreciate how fluffy it was, at least. To examine the seats a little closer, I must say I was slightly underwhelmed. All three of these airlines I'm comparing in this series have inferior seats on their 777s, and offer noticeably better seats on board other aircraft types. The 777 is the backbone of all their long and ultra long haul fleets, so these seats should theoretically be the best, but they're not, so that's kind of frustrating. On Qatar Air Anyways, the seat hasn't been updated since I reviewed it last in 2017, and the age is really starting to show. The entertainment screen is poor quality and pretty unresponsive to touch. The remote is useful, but also old-fashioned, and so is the Ethernet port, for that matter. At least the seats have built-in charging, both in the form of USB on the seat back and AC power under the seat, with two ports per three seats. Just like last time, I like the tray table design, which is becoming more common since it maximizes space. The seat back pocket is also great, allowing you to be a little more organized with where you lose your items, as opposed to having one big pocket where things just disappear into the abyss. The biggest essential for me on a long haul flight is an adjustable headrest. This is the sole component that can make or break sleep on a flight for me. Thankfully, Qatar Airways has an ultra adjustable headrest that has strong support so you can push and turn all you like while still being supported. Other than that, the leg room was decent, not really impressive, but also not bad by any means. I'm 187 centimeters or 6 foot 2, so I'm sure most people will be even more comfortable than I was. With that, let's take off! Give me mango juice and I'm happy. Sadly, there's no lemon mint in economy which would be a nice addition to the menu. The beverage service began 30 minutes after takeoff. There were plenty of drinks to choose from and I giggled to myself hearing almost every other passenger ask for champagne. I guess positioning yourself as such a premium carrier sets everyone's expectations of the drinks pretty high. I go for the juice and Qatar Airways has a great selection of those. The drinks were accompanied by a friend, these crackers. While being served my juice, I of course observed the service. And it's the little things like being called sir or madam in economy that set these high quality airlines apart. If you want a full list of all the airlines I've reviewed ranked from pretty much favorite to least favorite, it's on my website which is linked below. Soon enough, it was time for the meal. Here's the food menu for today's flight. I got a vegan meal and to be honest, I was surprised to see this dish. It's exactly the same dish that Qatar Airways serves in business class. Here it is on a flight I took two months ago. Kind of weird to serve the same food in both classes, especially two months apart. It sounds like I'm complaining, which is actually ridiculous though because the food tasted great. This is spinach and tofu ricotta tortellini and the presentation is especially impressive for an economy class pasta dish. When it came to drink quantity, I was underwhelmed after spending much of the spring flying US carriers where it's sort of common to get a whole can of soda. Surely the world's best airline gives a full soda can. Nope. 
but overall it was a satisfying and delicious meal. This is an approximate scale of the flight enjoyment level in various cabins in my experience. Economy class is mostly about making it to your destination without being too bored or uncomfortable. For example, I often see far more people sleeping on daytime flights in economy than I do in business class. Why? Because you just want to pass the time as quickly as possible in economy. Luckily, Qatar Airways seat has excellent recline, allowing you to sleep comfortably as far as economy class goes. Along with the headrest, the seat really cradles you. They also have individual air vents so you can control the temperature at your seat. Alternatively to sleeping, you can watch movies on Oryx One, which is among the best entertainment systems in the world. If you see past the quality of the screen, the entertainment selection really is good. The headphones aren't quite as impressive, but they didn't hurt my ears, which is the most important criteria. When it's time to work, Qatar Airways has you covered in the Wi-Fi department. All members of their free frequent flyer program, say that 10 times fast, receive one hour of free use, with a full flight pass available for only 10 which is remarkably cheap. Even better, if you pre-purchase, you can save an additional 20%. I paid just 6 euros for my full flight Wi-Fi pass and of course used NordVPN to protect myself while browsing. Speeds are not as fast as you'd expect with the name Super Wi-Fi, but they're more than adequate for loading pretty much everything apart from videos. I spent the rest of the flight working and snacking on various things the crew brought around. They repeatedly came through the cabin with snacks, drinks, etc. I hate to be nitpicky, but I am amused by my own double standards sometimes. On a 6 hour overnight red eye from the US to Europe, it's standard practice to serve dinner and breakfast. For some reason, even though this flight is also 6 hours, only one meal is served. It's ultimately not a big deal, but then again, you'd think that if any airline were to serve two meals on a 6 hour flight, it would be the world's best. Throughout the flight, another area where I noticed the true quality of the service on Qatar was in the bathroom. Every time I entered the lavatory, there was a clean toilet seat cover pre-placed on the toilet. Not only that, but the toilet paper was folded, seemingly after every time someone went in. Compare that to my flight on Iberia in March, where the sole lavatory in business class was filthy and flooded, to which the crew basically said, tough shit, hold it until we land. Ooh. At 11.15pm Doha time, we caught glimpse of the pearl and landed smoothly a few minutes later. Unfortunately, we arrived at a bus gate, which isn't my idea of a fun time during summer in the Gulf. Even though it was midnight, my weather app said it felt like 49 degrees Celsius. Once in the terminal, I cleared transfer security and headed straight to my gate, after saying hi to our big furry friend of course. And guess what? The airport was so busy. International travel is recovering, and I couldn't be happier. Soon enough, I was at gate B8, where my A350-1000 was waiting to take me to Dubai. This was such a shocking contrast to my last flight. Although the 777 I'd been on was just 8 years old, it was truly night and day comparing it to the A350. This cabin is so stunning and feels so much more spacious and modern. It's like a completely different airline. The seat has many of the same features, just moved around and modernized. The screen here is as responsive as an iPhone and there are exterior cameras in full HD. After a slight delay, we took off to Dubai. On this 45 minute flight, Qatar Airways manages to serve a little meal and you can even pre-order a vegan meal. When I saw they were serving meza, you won't believe how excited I was. It was served with the choice of water or orange juice since they wouldn't have time to serve everyone if they had to pour drinks as well. Before I knew it, we were already approaching Dubai where we landed at 3.15am local time. Again, I can't emphasize enough how much nicer this flight was than the 777. The prior flight felt so dreary and dark, while this one, despite being in the middle of the night, felt bright and energizing. So, to conclude, Qatar Airways economy class is nice, but not mind-blowing. The service is friendly, and the additional small touches like saying sir, changing the phrase what can I get you to what can I offer you make a big difference. The food is good, the entertainment and Wi-Fi is good, the recline is good. Everything is more than satisfactory, but few things apart from the entertainment selection itself are fantastic. With that, back to the studio and back to you, sports presenter Dan. 
Whoa, what a game. I, for one, am extremely excited to compare what Dan just showed us to what Emirates and Turkish Airlines can do on their 777s and see if any of them stand a chance. This is truly one for the history books, folks, and the game continues in merely one week. We'll see you back here then as Emirates hits the stage to show just how good they can do as this epic Middle Eastern Smackdown continues.